Hey gang, Kyle talks about choosing options when picking a carbine. Kyle, it's on you. Hey, Kyle here with DeFore Performance. Out here today to talk about how to choose a carbine. And let me start out with this, uh, some info that I got a long time ago. In my opinion, a modern day carbine, it needs four things. Number one, it needs to be a quality carbine from a quality manufacturer. Number two, you probably need some type of optic on it. And number three, needs a sling. The last thing is kind of getting into the modern day, you want to look at adding a light to it as well, especially if you're going to be doing any home defense work or any shooting low lighter at night. Now let's talk about carbines uh, and how to choose a good one. There's a lot of info out there on a lot of the accessories. One of the things that people don't talk about a lot is barrel. So I'm going to pick up this gun. All these guns are cleared and safe, locked to the rear and on safe. I'm going to have the cameraman come in right here. If we take a look here, we've got a lot of info written on that barrel. 5.56 NATO, 1 slash 7, a C, and an MP. And let's talk about all that. I'm going to set this down real quick. First off, on a barrel, you have choices when you get down to the 5.56223 uh, chambering and here they are. A barrel chambered in 5.56 millimeter, which is what the military uses, will shoot 5.56 and 223. A barrel chambered in 223 will not necessarily shoot 5.56 ammo. You could have some problems with extraction, with feeding, and you could even have some, some pressure issues depending on the type of bullet. So my recommendation, chambered in 5.56. The next thing written on that barrel was a 1 7. What that means is the twist rate. So we have rifling in a barrel. When the bullet goes down the barrel, the rifling turns the bullet. So think about a quarterback throwing a spiral football. That's what we have. The tighter the twist, generally speaking, the more accurate the bullet. So a one to seven twist, every seven inches of barrel equals one revolution of the bullet. A one to seven twist barrel in 5.56 will stabilize everything from uh, 55 grain all the way up to your 87 grain or so bullets. Now if you're going to shoot something below 55 grain, like the frange stuff that's in the 40 grain area, you might want to consider going to 1 to 9. But what I see nowadays, most people are going with 55 as their lowest end. So choose a 1 to 7, it'll shoot everything. The next couple of things you see on there, an MP and a C. The MP is for magnetic particle testing. It's a way for manufacturers to ensure quality of the barrel. The C on this particular one is a Colt barrel. Some manufacturers will stamp a C or a CH on the barrel, meaning that it is chrome lined. So my total recommendation for barrels is a 16 inch version, just because of ease of legality. I like it chambered in 5.56 millimeter, a one to seven twist, and it's a cold hammer forged barrel, which is how they make it, and it's chrome lined. That's my recommendations on barrels. As we come down and look at these guns, there's some other things here you need to think about. They're gonna come with different flash suppressors or flash hiders. You got a couple of different versions here. One of these is made to hold a suppressor. You've got one over here that would be considered a a comp or in, in some cases a brake. A brake is a little bit different, but what this does is expel gas out, make the recoil a little bit lighter on the shooter. Keep in mind when you do this though, you're going to have a little bit more of a flame coming out the gun if it's low light. As we work our way back on the guns, we look at rail systems. I particularly like a 12 inch rail. I like to get my hand out a little further when we're shooting. More on that in later segments, but it also adds, uh, I can put a light on there. I don't get a lot of feedback on my barrel, the light gets out there a little further. I can rest on cover a little bit easier when I have a long barrel or a long rail and it, it just makes things life a lot easier. We look at iron sights. You need to have some on the gun. I like flip down iron sights. They don't necessarily have to be flipped down but you need some on there. Working our way back here, uh, the pistol grip I like one like this BCM model here. It allows me to grip really high in the back strap, control recoil, and uh, move the gun a little bit easier. Triggers, there are aftermarket triggers out there. This is a Geisley ACT. There's other ones. I like the ones that pull roughly stock weight, uh, but are smooth. Back here, butt stocks. Again, multiple choices out there. If there's one problem that we have with the M4, it's too many options. I like one that accepts my sling very easily and that provides a good cheek weld. Charging handles, another option. You want to pick a reliable one that's easy to operate in case you need to. So all of these things with the carbine you need to consider, but the most important one, barrel, twist rate, and chambering. Make a good decision on that 
and it's going to make a better investment for you in the future. You're going to be able to shoot any bullet out there, and when you start adding these accessories, everything's going to be nice, fine, and tight on the range. All right, we'll see you out there. Trigger Time TV is brought to you by Raven Concealment System, Troy Industries, Troy Defense, Legion Firearms, U.S. Optics, Meredith Rifle, Dark Angel, Keltec, Yeti, Crossbone, Wiley X, Vertex, Black Rain Ordnance, Huber Concept, Tax Strike, and WW Guns. I'd like to dedicate today's episode to my father. On today's taping date, this would have been his 75th birthday.